Mining is a big enigma of the crypto world. Everyone knows about it. A lot of people are doing it. Some gain profit from it. But only a few understand what mining really is and why blockchains need it. Good news is that you don't have to go deep into technical details to decide whether to go in for mining or not. So what exactly is mining and what is it needed for? Let's go through some basics. The process of mining is crucial for several blockchains which are using proof-of-work algorithms to secure information in blocks. Miners collect a certain number of transactions, assemble them into a block, and then, if they're lucky, they can add this block to the chain. Why are we talking about luck? Because adding a new block means the person who did it will get a reward, usually a few coins. And mining is not as straightforward as solving problems in a math class. Not everyone who comes to a correct answer will receive an A. In mining, you have to find this answer first, otherwise all your work is meaningless. You're talking about math and problems. Does that mean that miners need to do complicated calculations? Should I have a degree to do this? Not at all. In fact, miners don't have to do anything other than provide their computers power. Special programs will calculate, or rather guess, a correct number that will open a new block. That's what mining is in a nutshell, guessing a certain number with the help of computing devices. Sounds easy, doesn't it? But don't get overexcited. Here we have to go back to luck. Hundreds and thousands of computers of other miners will try to do the same, to guess the one and only correct number for the next block. I'd better buy the lotto ticket. Why on earth would anyone spend their electricity on that? To understand this, we'll have to look at the history of mining. At the beginning of Bitcoin blockchain, when miners were not numerous, rewards were bigger and correct numbers easy to guess, everyone with a computer could mine a few dozen coins every day. Those days, Bitcoins were cheap, so first miners were doing it more for fun than for profits. But with the rise in Bitcoin's popularity and price, mining has become a way of making money. The idea of this passive income started to attract more and more miners. To keep the pace of adding new blocks, the blockchain made the number guessing process more time consuming. It would now take years to get to the correct answer on a home PC. So the miners started to buy and use more powerful computing devices. And this was still profitable because of the higher Bitcoin's price. And when those devices weren't enough, miners invented mining pools. A mining pool is an alliance of miners united to combine their processing powers to mine a cryptocurrency. Every participant provides his resources and gets a part of the reward every time a mining pool gets some coins for adding a block. This solution has proved its effectiveness and nowadays mining pools tend to dominate the mining process of the most popular coins. As you can see, when it comes to Bitcoin, mining today and five years ago are two different things. Now to start mining, you'll probably have to join a pool. That's in case you don't have a factory full of graphic processors in some cold country with cheap electricity. Otherwise, getting your hands on the necessary equipment will cost you a lot more money than you can make with creating blocks in years. Another option is cloud mining. In this case, you don't have to buy any additional hardware. Instead, you'll use the processing power of a remote data center. Nevertheless, renting mining equipment is not cheap either. Plus, don't forget that the number of Bitcoins given as a reward is now eight times lower than at the beginning and will be halved three more times until 2032. But why focus on Bitcoin? There are other coins to mine. Well, with popular and highly priced coins, the situation is more or less the same. If there are a lot of other miners, you'll probably need to buy powerful hardware or join the pool to get a noticeable profit. However, you can try to do what early Bitcoin miners did, find a new perspective coin and mine it using old good solo mining before the others jump in. And if you guess right and this new coin will gain value, for you, mining will really be a thing. But once again, it's about luck. Does mining have a future at all? Well, it's widely discussed right now. The impact of mining, or more accurately, of enormous quantities of computing equipment used for mining, is felt all over the world. That's not only the ecological impact we're talking about. 
Shortages of graphic chips used for mining are affecting different industries, and the pandemic has made things much worse. One of the solutions is switching to a proof-of-stake algorithm, which means no traditional, everyone-can-do-it mining at all. This concept suggests that mining power will depend on the number of coins owned by a miner, not on his computing resources. For example, the owner of 5% of coins will be able to add no more than 5% of blocks. Some cryptocurrencies are using proof-of-stake from the beginning, others have just started to adopt it. Have you heard about Ethereum 2.0? It's all about going from POW to POS. Still, this approach is not accepted by every crypto project. Part of the community think that the proof-of-stake algorithm is the opposite of decentralization, an idea that lies at the heart of crypto. Bitcoin is considered as a coin that will stay loyal to proof-of-work, and a lot of altcoins probably will also be mined in a traditional way. So let's sum up. Mining is still a way of making money in the crypto world, but anyone who would like to join has to weigh pros and cons. What to mine, where, and how? Those are the questions to answer before rushing up for a GPU chip. That's all for today's video. I hope you find it interesting and helpful. Let me know what you think about the future of mining in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of our new videos.